she gave us jobs, you know, like I worked in the mm-hmm. mail room, Gary worked over here making shelves or whatever, you know. So we're working in this very, very creative, very interesting advertising agency. Uh, they have the account Restaurant Associates that I was talking wow. about, Joe's account. So oh. they took that account seriously. And the best thing about that account is it owned the best restaurants in the city of New York. So the most expensive, the most high end, the greatest food. So they could actually entertain their clients in style because they were doing the advertising for these places. And that's how they got paid. They got paid by trade out. So I am dining in these restaurants when I'm 20 years old. I, I, I'm eating in a restaurant where the men, the, the, the check for dinner is more than my rent. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. so right. This is where my education came from early on. I, I, and that's how I met Joe you know, mm-hmm. way before I worked for him. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, I went to work for him in 84, 74, 60. Yeah, 15 years before I went to work for him, I met him un- under these conditions in, in the restaurants mm-hmm. that he created. So I saw it firsthand. And okay. I, I, uh, I found out many years later after working first as a dishwasher and then as a waiter and then as a bartender. And then I went out to the West Coast for a short time and worked in a beautiful hotel. Very lucky. I've had a very lucky career. I worked at the yeah. Hotel Bel Air at the time, one of the top 10 hotels in the world, you know, 1978. I walked into the place. They had just fired their day, man. This was an uh, era when you could do that. You can't do yeah. that. Anymore. No, unfortunately. You need the FBI background check, and you got to go through the HR department, and, and you'll never yeah. even see the bartender. You know, you're going re- to talk to me. You know. I, okay. I walked in the bar, and he hired me at the Hotel yeah. Bel Air. You know, give me a job. <laughs> yeah. Il signore De Groff ci sta appunto spiegando il, il modo in cui ha conosciuto eh, colui che poi è, è diventato suo mentore quando eh, si è trasferito a New York eh, la, la sua prima, la, il suo primo intento era di diventare un attore su Broadway. Eh, dopo questa cosa non è, non è andata in porto e ha fatto tantissimi lavori eh, per cercare di eh, appunto racimolare due soldini che iniziò a, eh, tramite un suo migliore amico iniziò a lavorare in un'agenzia, di, eh, un'agenzia pubblicitaria, agenzia pubblicitaria che coincidentalmente ehm, a sua volta lavorava con questo signore appunto Joe eh, che aveva eh, questi ristoranti, quindi dal eh, raccimolare, fare mille lavori per raccimolare due soldini si, ritrovò, si è ritrovato a e si è ritrovato a ehm, cenare in ristoranti dove spesso e volentieri il conto eh, era molto di più del soffitto per farvi capire un attimino in che tipo di realtà eh, stiamo parlando fondamentalmente la sua ispirazione per, appunto, per concludere la domanda dei libri eh, arriva sicuramente dal suo mente To go back to your question. Well, yeah, no, well, I, I most of that. Anyway, that's where your inspiration from. What a guy. When Joe hired me for the first time, this is what he said mm-hmm. to me. It was a little fine dining restaurant called Aurora. He said, Dale, I want a classic 19th century cocktail program. No mixes, wow. no artificial ingredients. <laughs> Figure it out. Go look for a book called How to Mix Drinks by Jerry Thomas. Okay. I went into a bookstore. I never heard of Jerry Thomas. I went into a bookstore and I said to the guy, I need a book called How to Mix Drinks by Jerry Thomas. He's looking through the catalog. No, I no book like that. So I go to another <laughs> bookstore. You know, then I went to the most famous bookstore, Scribner's, right on Fifth Avenue. They're not there anymore, but the, mm-hmm. the publishers, you know, Scribner's. And I walk in, I said, I'm looking for a book that seems to be really hard to find. It's called How to Mix Drinks by Jerry Thomas. And he goes, let me look in the, and he goes to the old and rare catalog, right? Mm-hmm. He says, hey, listen, this was written in 1862. You're not going to find it in a bookstore. <laughs> you know, this, no, this is what Joe was like. He gave you a job and you figured out how to do it. And if you couldn't okay. figure it out, tough luck. No job. Fair enough, you know? yeah. So I did find this book and I found a couple of other books. Joe wanted something and I was going to deliver it. At, yeah. at, at first, at this small, fine dining French restaurant, which was confusing mm-hmm. to me, because right? we were serving the wines of Bordeaux and Champagne. We had a big copper oh. champagne bucket, and we're serving 
you know, uh, we had a two-star Michelin French chef. I was very confused. Why, yeah. why am I doing this classic cocktail research? You know, Joe had a five-year plan. While I'm working there for two years, he's over there in Rockefeller Center up on top, reviving the old supper club called the Rainbow Room. And I didn't find out about it until Benny Goodman, the classic uh, big band guy, sits at my bar. Finally, yeah. I go over to the wine master, Ray Wellington, the guy who, who uh, helped me get hired. I said, Ray, what the hell's going on? Why is Benny Goodman sitting at my bar? What's going on around here? You know, there's wow. these are El Chilhuli, the artist, was sitting with Joe. And I'm like, and he says, oh, it's the Rainbow Room stuff. And I said, what Rainbow Room stuff? He said, don't you know about it? It's the Supper Club on top of Rockefeller Center. Joe, he's been working on it for a year, and he's got another year to go. It's going to be a beautiful, stunning, and they're reviving it, recreating it. Yeah. That's when I said to myself, I want that gig. I went to yeah. Joe. After he accepted my mate, I went to Joe, and I said, I hear you're doing the Rainbow Room thing. Now I get it. Now I understand why you want these drinks. I'd like to have a job. I got an idea. How about we do a menu with drinks from some of the famous supper clubs that might be in the shadow of that big building rock or 30 Rock, you know, like the old Stork Club or the Colony or the Copa. Yeah. I've done it, he said. And, of course, he had. Make me a menu and show me. So I worked on it for, like, months. I put a, a menu yeah. together. I used one of his partners as a taster, Michael Whiteman, and and his and his wife, who was a chef at that time for the mayor. And I created a menu for Joe that he liked. And I didn't get hired immediately, but I did get hired. And I'll tell you that story in a minute after you translate. Okay. <laughs> dove il suo, eh, colui che sarebbe diventato il suo, il suo mentore eh, gli chiese un cocktail del, del 1900 chiese un cocktail nel 1900 e, e lui pur di non sbagliare andò a, a cercarsi um, un, un libro che penso che conosciamo tutti qui presenti How to make drinks di Jerry Thomas e andò in svariate cartolibrerie per cercare questo libro eh, però nella maggior parte dei casi non, non, non l'ha trovato eh, al che eh, nell'ultimo nell posto dove eh, this was 1984 by the way this was yeah. 1984 this happened <laughs> ok quindi stiamo parlando del 1940 ehm, fine 1940 Il, nella cartellibreria gli dissero eh, grazie al letteralmente grazie al cavolo che non lo trovi è stato eh, pubblicato nel 1862 quindi per farvi capire eh, quanto, quanto comunque era disposto a ehm, che fare o comunque ehm, a contentare le richieste del signor Joe eh, che eh, successivamente a questo periodo ehm, dopo aver conosciuto un po' della clientela che aveva questo eh, fantastico Rainbow Room gli chiese se poteva lavorare per lui, al che eh, il signor Joe eh, gli chiese di mh, produrgli una cocktail list che ehm, impiegò il, al signor Dale appunto eh, svariati mesi eh, cercando di eh, appunto, chiedere a più persone cosa eh, pensavano di, di, dei suoi cocktail e alla fine 15 anni dopo ce l'ha fatta, insomma è riuscito nel suo intento di accontentare il signor Joe però sicuramente quella del House Mix Ring è una storia molto carina. What a story. So now I got a good story how I got hired. I'm seeing some of my American friends joining here, my friend Abigail. Fantastic. Got... Excellent. Yeah. Welcome. Nice, yeah. So uh, when I, when I uh, wanted the job, Joe liked my menu, but he said, I can't hire you because I have a manager. And this was a man he's worked with for 40 years. His name was uh, Alan... Uh, And Alan um, was an old, old friend of his, and I had to have an interview with him before he would hire me. Now, mm -hmm. Alan worked at another building downtown near the Flatiron building, and I, I walked into his office. He was an elderly gentleman. He had his feet up on the desk, and his eyes were closed, and I, I thought he was sleeping, you know. But as soon as I sat down, he said, so, kid, how much do you need to live on? In other words, I 